am going to be sharing seven steps to start a successful blog. So we're going to talk really quick about uh, building a successful blog. A lot of people want to start a blog. They're not really sure where to start or they kind of started one on a whim and they don't really know what they're doing. So I just wanted to come on and share some steps. You know, I started Naturally Glam through, uh, two, or three, two or three years ago. I actually started blogging under a different name, under a high school nickname. And, you know, it was just a personal blog. And then I realized that's not really what I wanted it to be. I really wanted it to be a, a resource for, um, for women uh, with natural hair who had some of the same, or without natural hair, who had some of the same interests that I had. So that is when I uh, rebranded started Naturally Glam, and the rest is becoming history. So first off, I just want to clarify for a lot of people what a blog is and what makes it different than a website. So first of all, a website is online just like a blog is online. However, most websites are stagnant, meaning that the information that you find there, it doesn't change very often. It stays the same pretty much day after day unless it's an online magazine or a news outlet where they're sharing uh, newsworthy news events that are happening right at the moment. Besides that, most websites are stagnant, whereas a blog is like a news website where it is updated on a regular basis. The content is forever changing, it's always moving, and that's what people like about it. People like the fact that they can kind of follow along and see new and, and good uh, information. Then you have a vlog, which basically is a video blog, which is just another way to do the same thing. You're just using video to make your content versus typing it or write, written content. And that's where you have sites like Vimeo and, and YouTube where you're able to upload videos and, and share your blog post, so to speak, as a blog instead. So um, the first step to starting a blog is finding out why you want to start the blog. That's number one. Why do you want to start? Do you want to share information? Or do you want to make money? Do you want it to be just a basically a, a personal journal? or online journal where you just kind of share. Um, there are different blogs for different things. Some people um, blog and they, they just do product reviews. That's what they want to do. They do couponing. Some people, if they may be travel to a foreign country, they may start a blog to share their experiences so that family and friends back home can stay tuned. With natural hair, some people start a blog to share their natural hair journey. They just want to tell people what they're doing and the things that they're trying with their hair. For me, I wanted a way to share um, what I was learning and the information I was gaining about natural hair. That's how it started, and it just blossomed into more things. And it was an easy way for me to get information to the small network of people that I was dealing with um, without having to like, constantly email them. It was just a place that they all could come to get that information that they were asking me for anyway, and then it just grew and grew and grew. So that's number one. Why do you want to start the blog? Find that out. And let me just tell you, if you start in a blog because you want to get free hair products or you get free stuff or you want to get paid to review stuff, you might want to reconsider because it's going to be a minute before that happens. Okay? <laughs> All right, so the second step is figuring out what type of blog you want to start. You know, do you want it to be a lifestyle blog where you just kind of share what's going on with you? Do you want it to be a beauty blog where you're focused on uh, beauty topics like hair care, skin care, makeup. Do you want it to be a fashion blog or do you want it to be a personal style blog? With well, fashion blog, you kind of keep up with trends. With well, more of a personal style blog, you will post about your personal, your personal style and your own outfits. Or you can kind of combine the two. Some people have photography blogs. A lot of photographers do have photography blogs. And it's just a way for them to um, share the craft. Is that They love photography, so it's just a way for them to showcase their work outside of what they're commissioned to do. There's gaming blogs. There's relationship blogs. There's parenting blogs, food blogs, cooking blogs, health blogs, fitness blogs, pet blogs. 
celebrity blogs. Like there's tons of different types of blogs out there. So you just have to determine what type of blog do you want to start. Sometimes you can have a blog that kind of combines multiple things and that's okay. Like naturallyglam.com, it's a combination of a beauty blog, it's a lifestyle blog, a health blog, and a, a personal style blog. It's, it's a combination because I cover all of those things on, on my site. And that's perfectly okay. You just want to know what it is. You want to be able to focus on what, what it is you want to blog about. Now, step number three is determine the platform. Are you going to do a written blog? Or are you going to do a video blog or a combination of the two? For example, Naturally Glam is a combination of the two. I do a YouTube videos, and I also have a written blog. But there are some very popular YouTube bloggers that do not have a written blog. Miss Vaughn TV is a perfect example of one. She does not have a written blog, but she does have a very, very successful YouTube channel, and that is her main focus. That's what she focuses on is making YouTube videos, and that's perfectly fine. The, the only catch with that is that if for some reason YouTube decided to go away or they decided that for some reason they did not want your YouTube channel up, they could shut you down and it's not but so much that you can do because they own it. So that is the that is the chance you take. So it always is a good idea to consider getting your own platform being self-hosted versus hosting your platform somewhere else like the free WordPress or free um, blogger or free YouTube you're hosting your platform somewhere else and if they decide they want to do away with it or do away with you they can and you don't have too much stake to hold if you decide to do written posts you want to keep your post to 500 words or less you want to move at least two to three very clear very high quality pictures and you want to talk in a conversational tone. You want people to feel like they're talking to a friend when they read your post or when they watch your videos. You want to let your personality shine through. And most importantly, if you get pictures from somewhere else that you did not take yourself, you need to get permission as well as give credit. Gone are the days where it's okay for you to snatch a picture offline and just say where you got it from, and that's it. Especially if you are monetizing your blog. If you are making any type of commercial funds from your blog, and you post someone else's picture on there, and you did not get their permission, whether you credited them or not, they can come for you. And they can say, hey, you used something that belonged to me. I didn't give you permission to use it. Yes, you gave me credit, but I still didn't say you could use it. And then you use it to make some money. And they can come for you. And we've all seen the like Michelle Fonz and a few other people who are big time bloggers. They, they are making big money. And then that's when people start coming for them saying, hey, that's my music on your YouTube video. You didn't ask me for it. Hey, that's my picture. On your website that you didn't ask me for yes you gave me credit but that is not enough okay so keep that in mind if you are making videos you want to make sure your video quality is the best that it can be now we are talking about starting so when you start out you may not have a DSLR $500,000 camera and that's okay you do the best with what you have more importantly than the camera a lot of times is the lighting so you may have a camera that can cost a lot but you want to try to get the best light and honestly the best light you can get is the light that God shines on you is free you just have to come at the right time of day and you can catch it so that is another uh, tip if you can't do natural lighting invest in a decent lighting kit so you can get the best quality video that you can don't worry about spending a whole lot of money, you know, at the beginning. Just do the best with what you have. People will appreciate that you're doing your best. You want to try to keep your videos to 10 minutes or less when possible. Depends on what it is you're doing. If you're just talking, unless that is your core group and your audience loves to sit down and watch you rant for 30 minutes, that's great. Majority of people don't. 
they want to see something quick down and dirty especially if you are just talking now, if you're demonstrating something like a hairstyle people may be willing to stick around to the end because they want to see how it turned out so um, but you still don't want your videos to be that long try to um, cut out things that may not need to be seen uh, speed up the footage you can do a lot of this with editing software and you can use the free editing software that comes with your laptop, whether you use a Apple product or a PC. Edit your video. Try to get them as close to 10 minutes as possible. Um, be yourself. Let your personality shine through. Talk like you're talking to a friend. If you need, if you've never done videos before, record a few and watch them, and let or let a friend watch and see how good or how bad is it. <laughs> you may find that maybe videos just isn't for you. Um, so make sure you have someone watch it that's going to give you honest feedback and tell you, no, boo, that's not going to work. Or say, actually, yeah, I kind of really enjoyed that, and maybe you need to do this or do that, okay? Number four tip is determining how much time you can invest. People think they're just going to start a blog and, oh, yeah, girl, I'm going to post two, three times a week. I'm posting it every day until it gets time to do it. And you realize, hold up. This takes time, especially videos. Videos take a lot of time to record and then a lot of time to edit. Cause like you said, like we said in step three, you want your quality to be good. So you're gonna take time to edit that video and get it down and, and make it high quality. And it takes a lot of time. So determine how much time you really honestly have to dedicate to it. And it's okay, whatever it is, just know it and then make sure you dedicate that you actually dedicate that time. Don't let other things get in to that time. If you're gonna blog for three hours on Sunday afternoon, like that's what you have to do. You have to shut it down and focus on working on your blog in those three hours. And there's so much that you can do in that time. You can schedule posts to post later on. You can schedule social media to post later on. So it is possible to run a successful blog with just a few hours a week. It is very possible. Just just commit to the time that you actually know that you have. Okay, number uh, and that lends to consistency. So once you determine how much time you have to spend, then you have to figure out how with that time you can be consistent. And by consistent, I mean you have a regular cycle of updating new content. You don't have to post every day. There's like the 80-20 rule where 20% of your time is dedicated to posting new content and the other 80% of the time is dedicated to advertising that content, promoting the content that you already have and not creating new content. That is so important for the new blogger. Why? Because quite frankly, when you first start, there's not that many people reading it. So if you're taking every day and you're posting new posts, new posts, new posts, but you aren't referring people to the ones you already have, you may get burnt out fast. So what you wanna do is post something, post a video, and then spend your time getting people over to it, getting people to look at it, getting people to read it, that builds your audience. Then once you know you have an audience, and they're asking for more content, then you can reevaluate how often you're gonna give them that new content. It's all about being consistent. Like we said before, Blogging is all about new content. That's what makes it different than a regular website. So you want to make sure that there's something new there. If you go to a blog and it hasn't been updated in two or three months, most people just assume that person doesn't blog anymore. Maybe they decide to stop blogging and they're not coming back. If you go to a YouTube channel and the last time they posted a video was a year ago, especially if it's a new channel people are not coming back maybe for channels that have been around a long time and they have a huge following people may wait around an example of that is a uh, kim a2 who is a really well-known youtube vlogger she stopped uh, making videos for some time after she um gave birth to her first child now she's back and people are still tuning in um people are still watching her videos and she has really good content but for most people if you go a year and you don't upload a video people are gone because there's so many new content creators they're not going to sit around and wait for you to make new content so commit 
to how much time you're going to spend and then be consistent with posting. Okay. Step number five is to interact and collaborate. That is so key. If you are watching this today or you're watching it later, how in the world do you think I know all of these people that are on this thing? I ain't just call them up and be like, hey, I don't know you, but uh, I want you to come participate in this. No, I've interacted with these ladies over the, some of them for years. I've interacted with them online. Maybe I had even met them in person at first, but interacted with, I don't think I've ever met their recent person. I don't think I've ever met her in person, but we are able to interact online. And so then I'm able to build a relationship with her. And then, so when it comes time to collaborate, it's very easy. A lot of people say, well, how do I collaborate with my favorite blogger? I said, it's just like when you have that family member or friend who you don't hear from until they need to borrow money, then all of a sudden they call you. You like, we don't even talk like that. Now you want to borrow $50. No. And it's the same way with collaborations. If you don't interact and you don't engage with that person on a regular basis out of just gen being genuine, when you need something or you want something from that person, then all of a sudden you want to talk to them and, hey, girl, and I want to know will you do this collab video with me, um, you're going to get side eyes, as you should. Interact with people, be genuinely engaged with them on a regular basis so that you build a relationship. And then through that relationship, you will have somebody that will want to collaborate with you and be more than willing to collaborate with you. And it won't matter the size. It will not matter the size. A perfect example of that is the Beauty Bee chat that you guys saw earlier. Um, Gabrielle, who does Strawberry Curls, her readership, her following is eons, eons beyond the rest of us who are a part of that. But because she saw our hustle and because we interacted and engaged with her um, on, in one of the blogger group we're a part of, she was willing to collaborate with us. And it's a win-win because she has the she has the numbers that we all can take advantage of because it gives us exposure um, for our brand. But then also she knows that she's got three other girls who are going to grind it out and work hard and going to come up with great content that she would like to have to give her a little break. So she's not coming up with everything on her own. So by engaging with others, that opens the door for collaborations and allows you to be able to collaborate on things like concepts, Twitter chats, giveaways, um, even when you want to collaborate with brands. Start out by interacting, sincere interaction with that brand. People uh, know that I am a brand ambassador for Eden Body Works, and I get asked a lot, how did you become a brand ambassador? I want to be a brand ambassador. In real talk, the only reason I became a brand ambassador for them or was even asked is because I was a promoter of the brand, not because they paid me to, not because they sent me free product. It was product that I bought on my own. I loved it. I liked it. I talked about it a lot. So then when I did engage with them, they saw it was sincere. They saw that I really liked the brand. And when an opportunity came and they needed someone, they asked me. Now, I'm not the biggest blogger. I'm not the you know highest watch blogger but they saw that i really did truly have a genuine interest for the brand and so that's how i was able to get that opportunity in collaboration now what you don't want to do is be a stalker don't be a stalker and don't be a spammer okay now what does that mean a stalker is somebody who you just randomly and weirdly post on somebody's uh twitter or the youtube and you're just weird. Just don't be weird. And also don't spam other people. Like, for example, a lot of times, I use the beauty be chat for an example. A lot of times people will randomly post their own content outside, not related to, to the beauty chat. And that to me, I feel like that is like a level of spam. It makes me lose a lot of respect for you because it's like, you know, Unless you're going to be a part of what we're doing to just jump on and use the hashtag and it's not even related just to try to get on. It's not a good look. People do it the same thing when you go to somebody's YouTube video, a popular blogger or not popular even. You go to their YouTube channel and then you post, hey, everybody follow me. 
you know, that is just, it's just, um, it just doesn't set well with most people. Now, some people may not be bothered by it, but I'm giving you the tips to be successful. And I think you would get further when it's genuine. You don't feel like you're just using somebody. You never interact with them. You never engage with them, but you want to come to their page and post about your page. Now, a dear, any of these ladies, Aaron, if they want to come to my channel and post something that they had that was related, they don't have to ask me. I don't care because we are already engaged. It doesn't matter. But if you're not engaged with someone, to just go to their page and just randomly start posting about your page, it's just inconsiderate. It's just like if somebody invites people over to your house um, for a party, but they don't live there. Then they want to knock on the door and they want you to come in, let them in so they can have the party at your house. It's like, this is my house. I pay the rent here. You can't just come here and have a party, invite people in. I'm just supposed to let you in because I'm supposed to be nice and let you come to my house and bring your friends and have a party at my house and eat the food that I brought. That, that's not right. So it's the same thing with um, collaborating. Okay, step six. Step six is to use the analytics. Everything has analytics. And basically what analytics do is they evaluate your site and give you some values. They tell you how many people are coming to your site. How long are they staying on your site? Um, are they coming and then leaving? Or are they staying? How many pages do they view on average when they visit? Are they unique visitors or are they people that come to your site all of the time? Um, what blog post is the most popular? What tag or what keyword uh, is the most popular on your site? You can use the same thing with YouTube. How long are people watching your videos? What is your average um, views? Do people actually watch the video to the end? Or are they cutting out after five minutes because you uploaded a 35 minute video on how to do a twist out and nobody's sticking around for that? Or you, if you upload fashion videos but people really, really watch your natural hair videos, this is stuff that you need to learn and you need to know. So take some time to really dig into your analytics, check them on a regular basis to see why people are coming to your site, what they want to see, so you can give them what they want so they'll keep coming back. And at the same time, of course, you still put your content, what you believe in, up, but you have to be paying attention to what people are looking for and what people want and try to give them what they want so they keep coming back. And then last, right at four o'clock <laughs> the last step is to use social media social media is one thing that you really really have to take advantage of because of the simple fact that it is free and it's not that you are trying to cut out and not pay for something because it's free it's not that but the fact of the matter is because it is free many many people are on it <laughs> So you need to be on it <laughs> because it's free, you know, and you don't have to pay for it a lot of times for a lot of the services that um, a huge uh, social media sites that you want to be a part of uh, Facebook and Twitter. A Pinterest also, especially if your blog is a lot of pictures on um, YouTube, maybe not so much, but if you have a written site where you have awesome pictures, Pinterest is your friend. So the Instagram is also another social media platform that is really well used by um, bloggers. So if you want to start a blog, you want to get uh, social media. And the best thing to do is to figure out your name for your blog and then try to capture that name on all of the social media platforms. Even if you favor one over another, you still want to be try to be active and engaged with your fans on all and promote your content on all of the social media sites that are all the major social media sites. I hope that this was helpful for you guys that are interested in starting a blog. I hopefully we'll have more of this because I know I just kind of went over the basics um, and can get into a little bit more later on, we'll do more of these type of hangouts. So I thank you guys for um, tuning in.